ladies and gentlemen, l'extraordinaire Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker was the first African-American international superstar. How did an African-American woman that had come from somewhere that was so racially segregated, how did she become this incredible cultural powerhouse? Bonsoir, madame. Bonsoir, monsieur. Hi, friends. Hi. Buenas noches. Buenas sera. Good evening, my damn hen. Oh, shalom. Shalom to everybody. I am so happy, full de joie, that part me room. So real happy. Sourire à l'amour, sourire, toujours sourire. My greatest souci, my greatest ennui, sourire, toujours sourire. Ce soir, je suis là, présent, les années ont passé. Mais il me semble, oui, c'est pour que l'on ne jamais quitté. Sourire à la vie. Si je pouvais résumer en trois mots, je dirais que c'est une femme qui chante, qui danse et qui se bat. Let me tell you, let me tell you children about Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker was perhaps the first black superstar she sang she danced she had affairs with princes she had affairs with princesses she was amazing and we have someone here fortunately who knows exactly what she did and can do it demi noir Josephine Baker, I call her the Queen, the first Beyonce. Like, she's the original Queen Bee, right? No one before her. She <clears throat> did it all from singing, acting, dancing. started out just in a uh, chorus line, but she was on the end. And notably, when the last dance on the end was always the one that was the goofy one or the funny one. And at the end, they would do a solo and show them just how miraculous she was. Elle a ramené en France ce qui est le swing en fait. Bah, avant, comme tu disais, ils dansaient vraiment très droit, c'était très carré, il n'y avait pas, il avait pas encore cette vie euh, dans le corps. Et du coup, elle a ramené ça. Il y a une autre façon de danser, en fait. Qu'il n'y a pas que les jambes ou que les bras. Et que tout peut danser ensemble, tout peut swinguer ensemble. Le hip-hop, il s'est nourri de tout. Il s'est nourri de tout et je pense qu'il s'est aussi nourri de, du swing, de, que ce soit en musique ou en, en danse. Et du coup, euh, elle, euh, par ça, par sa danse à elle, elle a euh, donné sa patte. Et nous, on a pris, en fait, comme on croit partout, bah, on a forcément pris d'elle, c'est sûr.
arrive à 18 ans en France et que du jour au lendemain on devient célèbre, euh, c'est extraordinaire. Je veux dire, c'est. Euh, alors qu'on a, on a été sur les petites routes, euh, les États-Unis, euh, on dort dans les petits hôtels où il fait froid, etc. Puis qu'on arrive au, à Paris, au théâtre des Champs-Élysées, et que du jour au lendemain, parce qu'il y a un, un affichiste, un grand affichiste qui s'appelle Paul Collin, qui, qui vous choisit dans la troupe, et finalement c'est le doigt du destin qui se pose sur vous. Mais en même temps, c'était une jeune fille qui, était, euh, qui faisait les choses pas comme tout le monde. Sa représentation sur la scène euh, le premier soir, euh, c'est quelque chose qui n'a jamais été euh, égalé, copié. Quoi. Je veux dire, euh, elle est arrivée en marchant sur les mains. Euh, enfin, je veux dire, c'est décrit par les, les critiques de l'époque comme quelque chose. Les gens, euh, ils ne savaient pas si c'était un homme, une femme. Et enfin, c'était absolument euh, bouleversant de, de, de nouveauté. Quoi. This is Josephine Baker on the stage of the Folie Bergère at a moment of music hall history. The, the infamous banana dance that um, Josephine unleashed on the Folie Bergère when she really had become a star, um, it's still quite shocking today because the costume was basically beaded bananas around the waist bare breasts, you know, a couple of ankle chains, and this strange sort of hair that was almost, you know, Marcel waved into a sort of flat to her head, which was almost as, as polished as a vinyl record. I mean, she looked like a statue come to life. She really did look like the Black Venus. And she'd stop mugging as much as she used to in her performance. She was always crossing her eyes and doing strange things and pulling faces. This was a little bit sexier, to say the least. And, uh, and, and, and quite a statement because she was being watched by a white hunter, <laughs> but she did, he couldn't get her at the end of the dance. She just stuck her bum out and off she went again. So it was quite a sort of, not two fingers to, to, to the sort of racial divide, but it was a very play, playful, amusing way of um, sort of, uh, of explaining why she was an equal. The banana outfit is it's a complicated one because in the sense it was part of her a performance on stage and it was trying to, as um, other academic writers have said, she was trying to um, bridge those the area of being African-American and this idea of, of what Africans were and, and, and trying to challenge those perceptions. Um, and, and a lot of writing that's been around Josephine Baker, that one of the positive things that have been said is that she did everything because she wanted to, you to do that and it was part of a transformation into being the person that she wanted to be. It's an unusual costume. Let's just look at the fashion. Like, it's unusual. She's not in a gown with sequins or tassels or feathers or, you know, anything of that era at all that was fashion. She's in freaking bananas. And at the time she did it, that was it. C'est vraiment utiliser tout, tous les préjugés possibles et imaginables. C'est les seins nus, euh, les grimaces d'animaux, les, les bananes, bah les bananes flagrants quoi. Du coup, elle a vraiment voulu se servir de tout ce qu'on disait sur eux pour euh, pour en faire son spectacle quoi. Tu voulais voir des grosses fesses, bah ça y est, tiens. Tu voulais voir. Tu as besoin d'aller en Afrique, je suis là. <rire> en gros, c'est un peu ça. I don't think anybody 
couldn't follow Josephine Baker because the, the, the political and economic and you know, racial climate is so different. It really is so different today. And, and fortunately, you know, there are great female black performers out there and that there's been a, a history of great female black performers, but she was the one there for the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s and the one who was crossing continents before anybody else was. So, you know, all right. Beyonce has probably taken that legacy and, and, and taken it even further and, and I'm a great admirer of her on, on many levels, not least for style, you know, for, for her to revive the banana dance is quite interesting because it's still controversial actually, it's still quite controversial um, and I think she did a pretty good job with it but nobody can dance that like Josephine Baker because Josephine danced as if her life depended on it. Don't see. Hey, don't see, don't see. Um, and, and there was such a joie de vivre to it. Uh, I, I think to her style, it was her style too. There were, there weren't choreographers. You know, she, she didn't have choreographers and costume designers and people who were sort of creating the image in the way that Beyonce, I'm sure, has about 500 people um, dressing her and advising her and all the rest of it. Josephine Baker was a 19-year-old girl on her own in Paris, you know, n unaware that she was, you know, whether she was going to starve or not. And yet, you know, within two years, she's, uh, there she is, the most famous black woman in the world, the highest paid woman in the world for that matter. More than anything, you, we think about the glamour of Josephine Baker um, and it's the way that she was able to push something like a banana outfit, which is incredibly problematic because there's that whole those racist and, and colonial overtones on it. Um, but it's still, in terms of a costume, is incredibly glamorous. And then she went on to wear amazing gowns in, ten, in terms of stage wear. I think pre-World War II, um, Josephine Baker had the same act. It was nakedness, it was feathers, it was ankle chains, it was pearls, it was, you know, everything that was sort of jazz age Paris. After World War II, she had become a diva. It's a very different thing. She was an ingenue when she was in Paris in the, the early days. In the later days, she became a diva, a performer. And um, to me, she, she dressed a little bit like Mae West, like the Hollywood star Mae West. You know, looking very far back, May West dressed in a sort of Edwardian drag, in a way. And I think Josephine Baker dragged herself up as this is how she would have dressed 20 years previously, but couldn't anymore. I mean, she did still have the body. And it was really interesting when you see Josephine Baker dancing at um, Carnegie Hall or at London Palladium, that she'll always throw in the banana dance. Josephine Baker basically did what she wanted to do. So that was there was this self agency and this power. Um, so those choices of why she wanted to dress were quite important. Um, and in terms of her sense of freedom. Well, I, th I think Josephine Baker did design her own costumes, that's for sure, because th there are records of her furiously looking through Vogue and making her own sketches. So I think she was in control of her own identity on stage and off stage. She was experimental in her dress style, whether on stage and off stage. Um, and I suppose that encourages, uh, encourages other people to do, to do the same. I think in, in fashion today, it would be um, very difficult to um, be literally inspired by Josephine Baker and, and it not to look like fashion history or costume. Um, but the spirit of her, I should think, yes. There are elements in old Alexander McQueen collections really still that had that as this savage beauty, that's what she was. She was the savage, but that was the, 
the impression really. I mean, to, to me, there was savage beauty plus this incredible wit, and that sort of diffused everything else in a way. That it was just a celebration of life, not of uh, you know, not of sex particularly, or you know, or race particularly. I just think she was so glad to be alive and, and grateful, actually. In a way, she was the first black model. You know, and, and it's interesting that in the 70s, towards the end of her life, models like Pat Cleveland idolised Josephine Baker because she was the first black model. She didn't particularly follow fashion, she became fashion. In terms of her impact on modern art um, performance, um, so, you know, there's Alexander Calder did a wire figure based on her. Um, of course, um, Paul Colin did all those illustrations. It's interesting that artists, photographers like Hoenig and Hune, um, Man Ray, they all wanted to photograph this incredible creature because they realised she was extraordinary, whether she was black or white. She was just a, a unique, extraordinary creature. I, I, I suppose that African-American performers, to actually over the last 40 years, have, have, have picked on Josephine Baker as somebody who was a pioneer. And that's not just because of her civil rights work, it was because of her fashion and her attitude. So you see performers like Diana Ross, you know, like Tina Turner, like Beyonce, like Rihanna, will look at Josephine Baker and see that you can be a strong, powerful, glamorous woman, actually one who was never controlled by men. You know, she married four times, but they were never very good marriages. So you've got this independent woman who had immense style, who had great sort of sexual energy on stage, and, and who started life dirt poor as a street dancer. And for the rap and hip hop community, that's really interesting, because she, she's almost, you know, she was the pioneer. She was the first one to do this. It's reassuring that someone like Rihanna will go that far back and think of someone like um, Josephine B Baker as somebody um, somebody key or important to her to, to emulate or to be inspired by. Bah, par exemple, F.K. Twigs, je vois sa coupe, je vois la coupe de José Vigny, quoi. The agency of being able to draw on somebody that was that influential uh, um, for, the, for people like Beyonce and Rihanna to draw on someone like um, uh, Josephine Baker, um, and I suppose, you know, if there's a younger generation who then see Beyonce or Rihanna and then they say that it's um, Josephine Baker, then they look up Josephine Baker and then see the dates and can't believe that a black woman in the 1920s was having that much um, cultural power um, or cultural influence has an impact on a younger generation to say, actually, wow, our history and a and, and positive aspect of our history goes back that far, if not, you know, of course, earlier, but in terms of, of that, and, it, it, you know, it all didn't start with hip-hop in the 1970s. Do you get what I mean? Within two years of being in Paris, I think Josephine Baker was probably the highest paid female performer in the world, you know, and she was getting 40,000 love letters, she was getting 2,000 proposals, and this is a black woman, a black strong woman in Paris. It wouldn't have happened in America. You know, America did not accept Josephine Baker, but uh, Paris loved her. C'était euh, une personne qui a du coup été très intelligente parce qu'elle s'est servie de l'image qu'on lui donnait pour réussir et pour changer, euh, changer les mentalités, pour tourner toute la situation à son avantage. En plus de ça, c'était une femme qui était vraiment libérée. Enfin, elle s'est mariée, je ne sais pas combien de fois. <rire> elle, a, enfin, elle faisait vraiment ce qu'elle voulait, quoi. Et c'est un, enfin, un exemple vraiment, que ce soit pour les femmes, pour les jeunes, enfin, de se dire, bah, peut-être que si on te donne cette image-là, tu peux t'en servir et réussir à, à construire autre chose derrière, à construire par cette image-là, faire montrer que vous me voyez comme ça, mais en fait, je peux faire beaucoup mieux, beaucoup plus en tant que femme, en tant que jeune, en tant que noire, en tant que enfin, plein de choses, quoi, des minorités, bah, on peut s'inspirer vraiment de ce genre de personnage dans sa vie, en fait. Un Josephine Baker for me had a profound effect on the visualization and the 
popularization of black culture in the 1920s and 30s, particularly at a moment when black people were, um, were felt it was their right to be part of modernity, to take part in, in modern life. We should kick down the door, especially to say, no, we are, you know, this is us. So she gave us a fact, the first person to kind of step into that. Elle est un modèle et elles ont intérêt à, à l'imiter le plus possible, mais après elles ont aussi intérêt à être elles-mêmes, ce qu'elles font d'ailleurs, hein, euh, et qu'elles continuent ce, ce combat de l'émancipation des femmes, mais en plus des femmes de couleur. Euh, oui, c'est extrêmement important, enfin, on le voit bien aujourd'hui avec tous les problèmes qui se passent dans le monde, le racisme et le rejet, la, la ségrégation n'est pas loin, donc euh, bien sûr le combat continue. Josephine Baker was, was one of the very few black artists who could demand that an audience wasn't segregated in America, splitting it um, black and white, and that they, you know, that, that she performed for every culture, for every race. The fact that she was big enough to demand such a thing which at the time was just unusual, I mean now, it shouldn't be unusual. I, I was watching a famous television program the other day on BBC, and the presenter was black and it was the first time I've seen on this show the presenter who was of colour. And I remember calling out to my partner going, oh, there's a black woman presenting such and such show. That should not be a problem. That should not be a shock to me. I should not feel to have to announce that to my household that there is a woman of colour on the screen. Um, so yeah, I think we've definitely got this just Baker in this when we are saying, you know, they, that there needs to be more positive moi j'ai fait récemment un, un livre sur Benoît Proulx qui était une grande féministe française dans, dans, dans tout son travail sur le féminisme en France et ailleurs je cite Joséphine Becker aussi comme une des, des femmes qui a vraiment fait avancer la cause des femmes en étant un exemple euh, d'émancipation et le féminisme incarné si on peut dire sans être militante, elle, elle vivait de façon libre elle est arrivée à s'introduire dans tous les palais, chez tous les présidents avec une aisance et, euh, et une liberté euh, déconcertante et grâce à ça elle a pu euh, faire des grandes choses dans sa vie euh, se battre euh, auprès de Martin Luther King Because I have a dream And now, to show the international character of the struggle in which we are currently engaged I would like to introduce to you a person who though far in residence from our shores has come all the way from her home to be with us today, Miss Josephine Baker. I've seen you all together, the sight for sore eyes. You are a united people at last, because without unity, there cannot be any victory. I'm glad. I'm glad that in my homeland, in my homeland where I was born and love and respect, I'm glad to see this day come to pass. This day because you are on the eve of complete victory. To go to America as an African-American woman in a French uniform and then stand up at Washington and saying, you know, fighting for the rights, civil rights of black people, I think that's somebody saying, I am being who I want to be. And I think a lot of, there's a lot of people out there who don't have the courage to do that, and she did. Si je pouvais dire les qualités principales de, de ma mère, c'était euh, une puissance de cœur, une vraie, un vrai cœur, c'est vraiment un grand courage physique et, et puis de mettre euh, ses paroles et ses actes en, en accord. Et je pense que c'est, elle voulait aussi comme c'est quelqu'un qui n'a pas beaucoup été à l'école, parce qu'à 8 ans, elle était déjà sur les, sur les routes pour, pour gagner un peu quelques cents. Je pense qu'au fond d'elle-même, elle, elle avait été beaucoup de fierté, elle était orgueilleuse, mais dans le bon sens du terme, et qu'elle voulait certainement être une, quelque part en vieillissant, une, une voix féminine, une grande voix féminine de ce siècle, est ce qu'elle a été d'ailleurs. I think, yeah, I suppose the lesson for of Josephine Baker is not so much style as substance, um, because she had a lot of knocks. You know, America didn't ever really accept her. You know,
know, she was barred from America for about seven years, I think, after a dust-up in the store club um, over race again. And um, her, I, I believe it was her first, you know, her first star appearance at the Ziegfeld Follies failed abysmally because the Americans just wouldn't accept. And I think the last dance she did was with four white men, and they couldn't accept it. People spat on Josephine Baker in, in, in America, whereas in Paris they would be giving her roses. Um, so I suppose I, I, I like her attitude of um, you know fighting for acceptance is is fundamental. Um, and she never gave up. She never stopped working. Elle, se, elle répétait toujours à ses enfants rien n'est impossible à qui le veut. Et cette phrase qui m'a travaillé euh, euh, longtemps. Euh, mais pourtant c'est quand même difficile. De... Parfois il y a les choses sont impossibles, mais elle avait une espèce de pugnacité euh, euh, envers et contre tout euh, qui l'a parfois menée trop loin parce qu'elle obstinée aussi. Mais malgré tout, je trouve que c'est une belle leçon de vie euh, de se dire que si on veut, on peut déplacer des choses, on peut déplacer des montagnes si on a l'énergie, la volonté et croire en soi pour essayer de faire avancer les choses. There aren't many women in history who would have had an impact on fashion, fine art, photography, dance, theatre, cabaret, um, human rights, um, you know, and be a French resistance war hero decorated with the um, Légion d'honneur. It's that's a pretty impressive life to me. She, you know, that thing of where she lost her home and had to start all over again and then performing again, at, you know, at a much older age. It is just that thing of, um, of perseverance. It's just that thing of, you know, yeah, okay, I can do this again and I can do this again. And I know, you know, in, in terms of adversity, never mind, I'm just going to keep doing it. Um, so it's all part and parcel of that. Um, determination to to continue really about you know doing your work about making your mark on society and you know that's definitely what um, what Josephine Baker um, has done. Thank you.